Michael Kane, our next speaker, who is from Yale University, where is an assistant professor of biostatistics and past winner of the ASA Chambers Award. His research focuses on computing. Can you restart that intro. I think you started okay. a little too soon. Okay. Thanks. We are now back live in our first session of Our Medicine 2020. I'm Peter Higgins. I'm one of your co-moderators for this session. And I want to introduce Michael Kane, who's an assistant professor of biostatistics at Yale University and a past winner of the ASA's Chambers Award. His research focuses on computing, latent space approaches, statistical learning problems, and reproducibility. He applies the methods to understanding human mobility and patient heterogeneity in clinical trials. And I have to mention that Michael is one of the co-founders of our medicine and chaired the organizing committee for the first two years. Today, he will be giving his first Our Medicine talk, believe it or not, uh, reporting clinical trial data and analyses with the list down package. Thank you. Thanks, Peter. Um, so I'm going to be talking about a package that uh, I, uh, I've been using uh, for a little while now that lets you programmatically generate our markdown documents. Um, I'm going to talk about why you'd actually want to do that and where what are the cases where it's an appropriate decision? Uh, and then also I'll talk about the use case um, where I've been using a package a lot, which is mostly in reporting for, uh, uh, for clinical trials. Um, so the assumptions that I'm gonna make for this talk is that are that you know our markdown. Uh, so you under understand the structure of an R markdown document. You can create one, you've built one and shown them to your friends. Um, you can build the documents um, uh, and um, uh, you're, you're then you're also familiar with clinical trial reporting. Uh, so that means you know what a clinical trial is. So you're at least aware of the, the idea that people construct these clinical trials to, to, to measure the efficacy of some kind of treatment or therapy, uh, usually some, uh, most uh, for, for humans. Um, and you know that uh, basically that reporting the analyses for, for one of these clinical trials is how you assess the the efficacy of, of the trial, um, and that's uh, basically that's uh, that, that's part of the regulatory process. Um, I'm also going to assume that you're introducing it, or you're interested in producing either trial reports or your own reports, um, and specifically for this talk and for the list down package uh, that you know that you're, you create a lot of tables or visualizations. Um, it's, uh, you probably work collaboratively. Uh, I tend to work with uh, clinicians and trialists uh, in a couple of different uh, disease areas. Um, and then, uh, and you've used mark, our, our markdown to do this, but you may be running in terms of, uh, into scalability issues with this, with writing your own R, R markdown uh, files. And by scalability, I mostly mean that you're creating a lot of different tables and, uh, and other visualizations, and you're running into time constraints with how many of these tables you wanna generate uh, versus how many you have time to, gen uh, to generate. Um, so the first thing I'm gonna do is just start with kind of a, a, an example of a section of an R markdown document. Um, so I, in this case, I'm using the, um, I'm using the, the uh, dplyr, the survival package, uh, which does survival analyses, and then also serve minor, which provides um, visualization of uh, Kaplan-Meier curves uh, for, uh, uh, for, uh, for 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 su survival analyses. Um, I'm also going to use the lung data set, which is inside the survival uh, uh, package. Uh, it's a pretty classic uh, data set that shows, you know, that. Uh, for conveying, you know, kind of simpler examples of uh, of uh, of survival. So what I'm going to do is load the lung data set, uh, and then I'm going to make a couple of change, or I'm going to make a small change to it. Um, I'm going to basically one of the one of the variables in the lung data set is sex, and it's numerically encoded. Uh, and since we are using R and we have proper factors, I'm actually going to encode those as male and female rather than one and two. Um, after that, I'm going to uh, create a, sur uh, a survival analysis. Um, so basically, uh, so it's, we're gonna regress sex onto the survival event of time and status. Uh, and then, you know, and, and then I may wanna visualize and see what that looks like. So the idea is not to sh show you how good I am at using uh, survival plot. I basically wanna use this as kind of a canonical example. That's 
that you can understand pretty quickly. Um, and this kind of looks like the, uh, you can see how this relates to the R Markdown documents that you're probably making. So if you are making one of these, you have your the um, the the R chunk, so the, the the R code, and then you usually have some text around it. So you know, so I may have text that I, where I want to actually describe this serve plot, and I might want to say the figure above indicates that women in the study tended to live longer in the first 750 days of the trial when compared to men. And again, I'm not as interested in this in actual analysis. Um, I'm mostly interested in thinking about this document and its parts. So if I wanted to break this down, I'm going to basically dichotomize uh, this document into two parts. So the first is the computational component. And this is the these are the pieces of the, of the document that are derived from, from computation. So the R chunk is a computational component. It tells you about, it gives you, uh, it shows a series of things that you want to do in R. And the idea is to create something that will be presented. In this case, it's a, it's a survival plot, but it can, so it can be a plot, it can be a table, um, it could be an interactive graphic or something like that. The other part is the narrative component. And the narrative component is basically the prose uh, that's associated, or the, the prose in the document. A lot of times it's kind of giving context to the computational component and then also providing a theme and uh, conveying something conceptually. So the idea is that the computational components are the objects to be pro uh, that are going to provide something that gets presented. So my R code created a, a, a visualization. And again, we're, when we're thinking about those, we're usually thinking about plots or tables. The narrative components are for for a lot of documents are 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 super important because they contextualize the presentation uh, that's associated with the computational components. They provide the background. They define the goals. They establish themes, and they can convey the results. So, that, so the narrative components are basically, you know, how how we think about how how we understand the comp uh, the the presentations derived from the computational components, and then also the extra information uh, that, that that that's conveyed. Um, so the integration of these two kind of defines literate programming. Uh, and the idea with literate programming is that we want to provide interpretability for the things that are being conveyed. Uh, and then we also want to facilitate reproducibility, which the R Markdown documents are really good at doing. So the list down package start, really starts with the observation that since computational components are by definition comp comp computationally derived objects, and R is a well-defined standard, it's po possible to programmatically create R Markdown documents with computational components. So the idea is that I can write an R program that's going to create an R Markdown, uh, an R Markdown document. Um, I'm not going to be able to fill in the, the narrative components because that's something that, that, uh, that that's not easily done programmatically. Uh, but I can put in these computational components, and I can arrange the presentation, and I can uh, and I can build these documents. And because I'm automating this process, I can think about doing this for a lot of different visualizations and a lot of uh, um, and, and a lot of different presentation types. All right. So how do we actually do this? Um, and why did I call this, or why is this called list down? So the idea is that a list. Uh, in R can do two things. So basically it can hold uh, these objects that we want to present. And then a list can also provide a hierarchy. And we can map that hierarchy onto the sections and subsections and sub subsections in, a, in an R Markdown document. So in this example, I have, uh, I'm creating a variable call, or yeah, so I'm, first I'm going to load the GT summary. Um, so basically in this case, I'm going to be building a table. Um, and I'm assuming that I've already uh, loaded the uh, survival package, um, uh, and, uh, and I can uh, and, and I can visualize the the, uh, the the survival analyses. So what I can do is I can create a, a list called comp underscore comp for computational component. Um, at the highest level, uh, the the list is named summary, and I'm going to add this dot tab set, um, and I'll show why in a sec. That list is going to hold another list where uh, another named list where the first element is called table one and it holds this table summary. Uh, the second element is called KM plots, which holds another list, uh, another named list where the objects are called overall, which uh, and overall is going to hold the plot 
the Kaplan-Meier plot for the for the uh, for the overall population in the lung data set, and the second one, second one is going to call is called bisex. So it's showing another Kaplan-Meier plot, um, but it's going to be uh, uh, but each but but the Kaplan-Meier plots are are bisex again in the lung data set, and then after that I might just want to show uh, I, I might want to think about the entire lung data set. So the idea is that the list elements are holding the things that I may want to I may want to convey and they're also holding structure. So from this it's, it should seem pretty reasonable that I should be able to make an R markdown document of chunks, uh, not necessarily text. So again, the list names can be thought of titles or sections or subsections. List, list elements contain the objects we want to present and the hierarchy defines these uh, sections and subsections. So if I actually want to see what the hierarchy looks like, uh, the first, uh, there's a function in list down called uh, LDCC dendro. So that basically I'm going to make create a dendrogram from the computational components. So if I call LDCC dendro, I can see that I have, that I'm looking at the computational components object, and then I can see the hierarchy of both of the names um, which again, we can think of as corresponding to sections, and then also the objects that are being uh, th th that, are, that are being held. So I'm not actually going to uh, display the objects or anything like that. I'm just going to tell you what they are. So you can see table one is a table summary, and it's also a GT summary. Overall is a ggserve plot. It's a ggserve, and then it's also a list. And data, which is my original data set, is just a data frame. So if I actually want to create a document from this, the thing I'm going to do, I need to do a couple of things. So first, I need to tell the document where the object is. So where are the computational components that are that I'm going to create the document from? And to do this, what I'm going to I'm going to save the computational components uh, using RDS. So after that, then I'm going to create a list down object. So the list down object is going to tell R how to actually create the documents. The first argument to list down is the, this load CC expression. So this is load the computational components expression. So I saved the computational components as an RDS file. So the expression that's going to load them is just in read RDS CC dot RDS. Next argument is the package. So this is what are the packages that are going to be needed to actually create the uh, to create the derived document from from our markdown. Um, we have. In this case, it's going to be the survival package and uh, the serve minor. Um, after that, uh, the rest of these arguments are going to be the R chunk options. So I'm saying don't echo the R chunks. Don't tell me if there are warnings and don't tell me if there are messages. So essentially, I want to just show the output or the presentation of the computational components without showing the underlying R code that's, uh, that, that, that's going to be creating it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to call a function called LD make chunks. So LD make chunks is going to take the the LD object, uh, which which knows both where the data are and how to actually create the uh, the, the, the document, and it's going to output a um, it's going to output a character vector where each uh, element of the character ve uh, character vector corresponds to a line in the output document. So if I look at what that actually looks like. Uh, again, this is only the first uh, 15 lines, but I can see I have an R Markdown document. So I can see the first thing I do is I have a I have a chunk. Uh, the options that I specified um, in uh, in the the list in, in the list down function are uh, are are there in each one of the chunks. And all the first chunk does is it loads the libraries uh, th th that I want to use, uh, and then also reads in the data set. So by default, or yeah, by convention, the 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 data being read in that's again the cc.rds is going to be held in 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 a variable called cc list, and after that, I'm going to be creating sections and then eat, and uh, and r chunks, and all the r chunk is going to do is call um, is call the appropriate element of the cc list. So for example, my cc list. Uh, my yeah, my original comp comp object started with a list, a named list, where the, at the top level it was called lung summary, uh, along with this tab set thing that I'll uh, that, that I'll explain in a sec. Um, the first element of that was another named list called table one. 
And then after that comes a, an, um, a computational component. This is something that I want to create a, a presentation from. And all, 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 the R, uh, all the R chunk is actually doing is it's calling the appropriate element of CC list. So if I actually, so this shows me that I can go from the, the list down object and the computational components to R chunks. Uh, if I actually want to generate an R markdown document programmatically, then what I can do is I can say, uh, as character, I'm going to, uh, yeah, then my document basically needs to start out with a header. So there are a couple of functions that facilitate um, R markdown header creation. Uh, in this case, I'm just going to make a vanilla header, uh, a vanilla HTML header. Uh, but there are um, there are functions to do things like to create workflow R uh, headers uh, or a couple of other uh, or other headers. If you want to create your own header, um, this is just a, a, a it's uh, this just uses the YAML package, so you can create your own um, your own header using YAML and then output it to uh, to to the document string. But I'm just going to create this vanilla HTML header. And then after that, I'm going to add chunks, and that's going to be my document. After that, I can uh, I can write the the document to uh, to an R Markdown library. In this call, in this case, it's called Lung Summary RMD. And after that, I can I, I can render it to actually create it. So here's the R. Here's the um, so here's the actual document. Uh, it is embedded, and uh, because I had uh, I had specified tab uh, the tab set. I have a set of tabs. So the document is called the output document. After that, there's lung summary. Here's table one, KM plots and data. These were the names of the um, of the uh, of the sublists I had. I used GT summary to create table one, and you can see this is the uh, the, the summary uh, created by uh, by table one. By in this case, it's the institution, then uh, the age, and then and then the sex. I can go to the Kaplan Meyer plots again. Here's overall. This was the the um, the uh, overall yeah the Kaplan Meyer plot for the entire population, and then here it is by sex. After that, I have the data um, that I put into a uh, in, that I put into a, um, a, a data table object, and I can actually go then uh, through the entire data set and uh, and, and look at the ent entries one by one. Um, there are a couple of other features that are included. Um, the, you can add code at the beginning of the document. So ListDown has a, an argument called init expression. So if you need to do things like customize your um, uh, the, the, the functions that you're using for presentation, those functions are, are called decorators. And you can specify those uh, in, in, uh, with ListDown. Uh, you can use an, an initial expression to to do kind of whatever um, whatever initialization you need for uh, for functions. If you end up if you if you're leveraging a lot of code that, that that you've written in R, it's not suggested that you use the initial expression option. You probably want to just uh, uh, put that into an R file and in the initial expression call source. Um, but these are things that are executed immediately after loading the libraries. Um, after that. You can control the chunk options in a couple of different ways. So, if you want to, for the entire document, uh, I already showed how you can use the dot 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 argument. You can control chunk options for object types. Um, uh, this is using this decorator chunk option. Uh, so, this would make sure that the that a, diff, a, a given type of R object is presented in a very in a uniform way across the entire document. And then, if you really need to, uh, you can um, you can specify chunks for an individual computational component um, by using the ld chunk ops function, and this essentially adds attributes to the to the computational components. Um, this is kind of the 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 the, the, the last one is, is a little bit discouraged though because it's it's uh, it's the least it, it's the least general um, in terms of the um, priority though the lowest priority is given to controlling jumps. Uh, chunks for the entire document, um, then object type is a higher, higher priority, and then the uh, attribute types get the, get the highest priority. Um, so, so this shows how to actually create one of these, one of these documents. Um, so 
even yeah. So I guess one thing to think about is if you can if you can you can create uh, programmatically create an R Markdown document. Is it a good idea? And the answer is that most of the time it's probably not. Um, if you're going to think about doing it, you need to think about where uh, a context that's very well defined. So when I'm doing this, I usually have a lot of visualizations that I need to that I need to create uh, visualizations and tables. I'm usually working with someone who understands the data at least as well as me, and that's that, that tends to be with clinicians. Um, and uh, and the idea for us is basically to generate a lot of different documents that we can restructure very quickly. Um, uh, and then, uh, and then at the same time, our job is mostly to build a narrative and make sure that what we're seeing in the data corresponds to the clinician's understanding of what's going on in those data. Um, so, if you're interested in using Listdown, uh, it, it has been used kind of in practice. Uh, it's pretty mature at this point, uh, and. Uh, I'm thinking about it, yeah, it has a pretty mature and stable interface. Uh, it's available on GitHub and on CRAN uh, right now. Thanks very much. Okay. Well, that generated a number of questions. Uh, Michael, one came up and has been upvoted is, is it possible to specify different parameters for each chunk? For example, cache equals true for some cache chunks and, and false for other chunks. Yes, so you can do that with the with the with the with chunk options. So essentially, um, and what chunk options is doing is attaching attributes to to the to the computational component list elements. So what list down will do is it goes through and looks at what are for a given type, what does it think it should be do? It should, should uh, how is it should how should it be presented? And then are there attributes associated with it that tell it to actually change the 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 the, the, the chunk options? Um, so so uh, yeah, so 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 that uh, that option is available. Another question from Eva Redemal got two votes, asking if uh, you can auto render to PDF. Yep. So as long as that PDF information is, uh, you can either put it in the header or you can you can specify that using the render function. Um, and uh, in, in either of those cases, you can create PDF or you can retarget to HTML or, or, or even Word. Okay. And would tiny text be a reasonable dependency for going to PDF? Uh, that sounds... That sounds right. I, I I think that's right, and it's not that, and it's it's and and that's a dependency on on R Markdown, not on Listdown directly. Mm -hmm. All Listdown is really really doing is write, writing the R Markdown files, and then you know, um, and then R Markdown the the, the package can uh, can can render however you know however it does that. Um, Jeremy Selva asks, can you add text to explain the table or plot using Listdown? Yeah, that's a really good question. And um, so you can always just generate the R Markdown file if it has a lot of visualizations. And then you can, it's just an R Markdown file, right? So then the, the output of that, you could uh, add text to and then render. Um, if you really want to, you could add those text, the, the text as a computational component by basically by making them a string um, that are held by the list. And then, you know, for the R chunks, you would use the results uh, as is, and then it, it would put that text uh, in line. We'd started talking about what if you want to iterate between, you know, adding a adding narrative components, but keeping track of them and going back and forth. And I think that's kind of, if there's a lot of interest in that, we might pursue it um, for the purposes that I've been using it so far. I, you know, I haven't really needed to do that. Okay. Well, we're going to wrap up. Thank you very much, Michael. And I think Beth is going to introduce the next speaker.